What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Another episode on the T5 today. Big thanks for all the feedback on the Caddy video, the hybrid thump bumper. It got a lot of love from you guys. And a big thanks for all the feedback with regards to number plate location. Still haven't decided that yet, but I will update you as and when. Today, we are working on the T5 and I am in the doorway. The sun is finally shining. It's actually warm and it is hotter than Ariana Grande in the push bike video. You've been there all night, you've been there all day. Enough of that. Today we're working on steering and suspension. I have got some new shocks and springs. New to me, shocks and springs. We have got some bushes to go in the wishbones, front and rear bushes. We've got the Febby Bilstein bushes. We're going to get straight on with it because it is pretty toasty in this doorway. Let's have a look at the bits. Let's get straight into it. Oh, yep. Yeah. We've got the T5 up in the air, got the wheels off. If you know from some of the previous videos, it doesn't fit on my ramp. The legs aren't long enough for this long wheelbase. So we've just got the front up for now, got some axle stands hiding under there, keeping it all safe. And we need to tackle steering and suspension, the wishbones, and just in general, strip it all out and see what's going on. When we drove it back, the suspension was a bit woolly, it was a bit bouncy, uh, a little bit knocky, so we're going to just replace everything it needs that I can find today. I have already got a collection of new parts, they've turned up, we're getting on with it today. First of all, shocks and springs. They don't look too bad a condition, but they are baggy. You go over a bump and it keeps bouncing after you've left the bump. Not very nice. We've got some knocking noises, which I have found out to be the front wishbone bushes these puppies in there if i grab the hub turn it left to right i can't do it with two hands but there's movement and that is that front bush that was knocking and not making a nice noise while i've been inspecting and having a little cheeky peek under it i can see the front brake hose is slightly perished it's not an mot failure but it is an advisory and it's on the brakes so we've got two new brake hoses coming then on closer inspection we can see there's a gap on top of that anti-roll bar bush so i'm pretty sure that will be knocking and moving about we need to disassemble all of this if you're just doing shocks and springs you don't need to take the hub and other bits like that off and if you're just doing the wishbone you don't need to take the leg or anything like that out but i'm going to do the whole lot while i'm in this corner hub off wishbone off shock absorber off get everything out of the way and we can assess everything on the floor and see what's going on. Quick little few tips I want to show here. This is the anti-roll bar drop link. You can see the end of it is a bit fluffy, a bit corroded. If you're reusing these, get a wire wheel on a drill, clean them right up, grease them a bit, and then you've got chance of that nut coming undone. They do take a six mil hex in the middle, then you have a spanner, but that is not easy. So we're going to wire wheel it, hopefully get the nut off and we're not going to replace the drop links this time because these are really tight i've already checked them and they're already tight then we want to get the shock absorber out we've got two pinch bolts there's the end they go through the other way little tip of getting the hub off the shock absorber obviously take the bolts out then i'm going to turn the steering all the way round so i can access the groove at the back i'll get a hammer i'll get a chisel and i'm going to wedge the chisel facing downwards slightly tap it and you'll see that once you tap it downwards, not only does that open the hub up, but it does help with knocking it off and they come off a lot easier. Rather than just beating these two top surfaces and making your hub look unpretty, you can get them apart a lot easier. Anyway, we need to get all this off. Wishbone, we've got some 21 mil nuts and bolts, front and back. We've got some Torx bits on the ball joints. I have already stripped one side down, a bit like Blue Peter. Here's one we made earlier. To get the shock absorber out, I know there's a, a nut or a bolt in there, so we need to get the wiper blades off, get this plastic cover out of the way, and before I take the wipers off, I just put a bit of masking tape where the wipers live, because when you go to put them back on, if you put them on too low, they're gonna hit on the way down. If you put the wipers on too high, they're gonna hit the A posts as they go up. A Little bit of tape, then you know where they go. Just gone to get the top nut off the shock absorber that side. We've got the wipers out of the way. We've got the scuttle panel out of the way. And I just want to point a few bits out. Cheeky little cover. Lives on top of the strut there. 
and that is the nut. With struts, you can put a hex bit in the middle and use a spanner, but so much easier, you need to get an impact gun. Bang, 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 bang. Impact them off. I can get one in that side, but on the driver's side here, we're not going to get anything in there because the wiper assembly is in the way. 10 mil bolt, 10 mil bolt, and yes, a third one there. But just while I've spotted, can you see this is corroded? And this seems to be a typical thing on VWs. Don't know what's going on, but that is moisture. It's going slightly rusty. So before it does seize up, because this arm seizes in there, what I'm going to do is take this black cover off. Under that black cover is a C-clip. Once you've undone that, you can carefully tap that down with a hammer. That will slide this arm and that whole pin out of this housing. We'll clean it up with a wire wheel, re-grease it and put it back in. And while you're there, you might as well clean that one up too. Just something I wanted to point out while it was stripped off. Anyway, there is so many interruptions today. I have took shots and shots because people keep turning up chit-chatting and making loads of noise. There's Mr. Pinchin. Hello. Hello. Anyway, what are you tweeting at now, mate? Jesus. Anyway, going to strip these out. It might be night time or evening time when we get the next shot because it just might be. <sighs> it's not night time yet. I cracked on. No more interruptions, no more distractions. We are all stripped out. I have got a collection of bits. I did mention in a previous shot that you want to get your buzz gun in there to uh, take that top nut off. But my buzz gun didn't fit in there. If you've got a smaller one, it might it might fit. If not, i done it with a ratchet. One click at a time. Wasn't too easy. It did take a minute. And obviously, when you finally get to the last thread, Get under there to catch it and be ready because they are quite heavy. Yeah, anyway, I do plan to give under there a bit of a hoover and a clean out as that's where all the rain goes from running down your windscreen. You have got the drain holes on each end. We're going to hoover it out. We're going to clean in there because it is a bit minging and uh, make it look a bit pretty. I did grease up the windscreen wiper uh, linkages, pop the ends out, I cleaned both sides with a wire wheel and I put some fresh grease in there. They were quite tight, so happy i done them. There's all the old bits. I'm not using the shocks, I'm not using the springs. We'll talk about the shocks and the springs a bit later because the springs aren't here. They will be turning up in the morning and I have got another pair of shocks. A big shout out to my friend Steve who donated them to the channel dropped them off to the workshop as well. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, and while these are all apart, I'm going to give them a Facebook Marketplace rebuild. What do you mean by that? We're going to get them all powder coated. Nope. I'm going to hit them with the wire wheel. Then we'll give them a bit of primer, then a bit of satin black or a bit of shiny black. And we just want to make things look a bit prettier. What's the point I hear you say? Well, if I've taken something apart and put it back together, I want it to look aesthetically pleasing let's say i sell the van i want it to look half decent you know underneath on top i want it to look like it's been played with by someone who half knows what they're doing and i believe i half know what i'm doing not one but two days later what did you get up to yesterday i spent most of yesterday cleaning everything with a wire wheel on a drill on an air tool wire brushing everything bit of etch primer bit of gloss black and I did get a bit carried away. We ended up stripping off the uh, the brake, the dust shields for the brake discs, etc. But yeah, it's come out nice. Really happy with how they look. Um, super pumped, in fact. Let's have a little look. I did tape up all the rubbers, all the bleed nipples, and any stuff that didn't want paint on. It's just a bit of a nicer job. Calipers look really good, arms look really good. The shocks were already in good condition, but a quick scotch off, uh, a nice coat of shiny paint. Front and rear shocks, all looking sweet. Hubs look pretty good, actually, with a bit of paint on. The dust shields, they don't look as good. You can see, in fact, they look a bit ropey, but they're 18 years old and they're not completely missing. Normally, the dust shields on most older motors are completely rusted away. These were intact, 
wanted to prolong the life a little bit more so a quick tickle off with a wire wheel a little bit of etch primer and a bit of rust inhibiting primer and then a bit of gloss black they're gonna last a few more years i went with shiny and right i went with shiny over the satin you know the oem finish because dirt and dust sticks to satin so that's why i went for shiny because dust doesn't stick as much and let's face it once i've fitted these no one's going to ever clean them again so i wanted them to stay as clean as possible let's quickly talk about the arms and the bushes removal and refitting first of all i started with the small bush at the front i would just use the socket and the rubber was so warm that the rubber just tapped its way out nice and easy the race on the inside i got an air saw which is basically a hacksaw air assisted you can use a hand saw hacksaw you need to take the blade out put it through the hole cut through the outer race then it will hammer and chisel out nice and easy with regards to the back bush i've done the same again i cut through the outer race with the bush in because that was still intact cut through it twice hammer and chiseled it out it took a minute but we got there in the end and while they're out clean the insides of the arm with a file some sandpaper just clean them up because they do corrode you don't want the new bush to stick on the way back in nice and easy bit of grease the uh regards to fitting the front bush the smaller one that can go in any way round plenty of grease put it in a vise with a sufficient socket on the other end wound the vise in that one popped that one straight in now the back one was a bit trickier i ended up having to clamp one side in the vise then turn it round do the other side and work it in in stages half half turn it round turn it round then when I got it in halfway I got again a sufficient socket the same size as the race and managed to tap it the last bit of the way in with the big bushes at the back they do go in a certain way so make sure the groove in the center of the bush is facing the casting the tooth on the casting and that puts it in the right way round. They come out that way, they go back in that way. Took a minute to get the bushes in and out, but we got there and got it done in the end, and you'll end up with some old bushes that look like this. While I had my suspension off, I wanted to check what the shocks were like, and to check them properly, you need to disassemble the springs. Took the springs off, and you can see that the, the shock absorber was absolutely knackered. It was really floppy, and that would be why it was bouncing all over the show. Now the top mounts, the bushes were all good. There was no sort of movement in them. The rubber wasn't worn, so we reused them. But I did pop the bearings apart, clean all the races up, and re-grease all the bearings with drive shaft grease. We want it to steer nicely. And I did check the bearings on the old top mounts and all the bearings were rusty. So that was probably why I had slightly notchy steering. Let's talk about these new springs that are just winking at us in the shot. I had a little look online. You can get H&R springs, Votland springs. They're like 300 quid a set. They're good. They're good for the money. I've seen good raving reviews about them. I didn't have the budget for them. I did see a few posts on people saying the Amax suspension kit is a really good budget kit i google searched it after ebay searching it they're about 150 quid a set good value for money i was impressed but i did give it a google search and i scrolled past euro car parts it's a car part supplier that i use come up as 67 pounds for a set of t5 lowering springs i thought that can't be right clicked on the link and i got the number from the link to you they are 50 pounds plus the vat i said what are they biro springs they can't be a full set of lowering springs for that money he said they'll order them in send them out they came the next day and they're not biro springs they're actually a genuine set of springs how's it going pinch a few people mention you on the channel they must be local and know you are oh, you yeah. oh, yeah. anyway the springs they're actually a full set of springs they look good the quality is nice nice bit of paint on them they're not wafer thin i believe they're going to take the weight that is the part number so if someone wants to buy them and look i saw these exact set for sale on ebay for 150 pounds delivered i got them from euro car parts for 50 pound plus the vat delivered next day you could buy a set 
stick them on eBay and you could make money for every set. But shush, don't tell everyone because literally, I can't believe they're so cheap. If you've got a T5, get on Euro Car Parts, quote them both of these numbers, either that number there or the first number, 50 pound plus the VAT. I have got a trade account, so it might be a few quid less, but whatever, absolutely banging. I've seen good reviews about them online. I don't know how long they're gonna last, longevity wise. I can't see why they'd fail any easy, but by the end of the video, we'll be testing it up and down this bumpy road and we'll see what they're like. Anyway, moving on. The scuttle panel or the inner scuttle panel. In the last shot, it was dirty. I said I was gonna clean it. I couldn't be bothered to do that, just kidding. I did clean it and it was absolutely hanging. Um, 18 years of grime and dirt had actually stained in it. I did have to get a cloth and polish to get the last of the marks out. You'll see how clean one side comes up to how dirty the other side comes up. I didn't get all the stains because there is a bit of uh, wax oil in a few areas and I didn't want to wash that off and I didn't wash it off with water because I don't want it to then corrode out. I washed it with WD-40, gives it a bit of a coating and it does definitely look a lot better. Happy with that. Clean the bottom of the windscreen too under the trim. Just a few little extra steps while it's apart makes all the difference. Now, it's assembly time. Let me step back. It's assembly time. We're gonna roll a time-lapse, first time-lapse of this video. What I'm gonna do is get the shock absorber in first, then the wishbone. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's roll the time-lapse. Let's see what this looks like all back together. I am still waiting for my anti-roll bar D bushes to arrive. Hopefully they turn up while we're time-lapsing. We'll find out. Enough chit-chat, let's get straight into it. Are oh, yeah. It's all back together and just one little tip I want to show. You know I love to give a little tip. When doing wishbones, whether that's a front wishbone or a rear wishbone, you don't do the inner bolts up where the bushes are with the leg fully extended downwards. If you was on a four poster ramp, it's nice and easy because you would lower the vehicle, get underneath, then do the inner bolts up because you want to do the inner bolts up with the leg upwards you know in the lowered position rather than in the extended position so i've got a jack in place because i don't have a four poster i've just snugged the bolts up and i'm just jacking it to lift the arm up so it's in the relatively lowered position we're going to sneak in there and do the bolts up here's a bit of a squeeze but I'm sure you'll work it out. And look, when I reassemble stuff, I might use an impact gun to take it apart, but when refitting it, I don't tend to use impact guns. Don't get me wrong, if you've got a long thread, buzz it up. Then I use a ratchet on every single nut and bolt. I did on the engine, I do on every nut and bolt. Reason being, you don't want to over tighten it and you don't want to leave it loose. You don't know how tight it is with a buzz gun. You don't want to strip threads. You don't want to leave it loose. So I do every bolt up by hand. Takes a bit longer, but then you know it's absolutely spot on. Wishbone bolts are done up in the raised position. We can lower the jack down. Doesn't look like you've actually done anything because it drops all the way back down. But now they're preloaded where they want to be. That is it all finished up. I say it's all finished up. My D bushes haven't turned up, so I'll do that off camera. We've got new brake hoses. I've bled it out. You might notice my brake pad wear sensor isn't connected. At some point in its life, someone's cut it. I do want to reinstate it, so I'm waiting for a new repair bit of loom so we can plug that back in. 
Calipers are looking sweet. I like a bit of silver, a bit of gloss black. The carriers aren't as shiny, but hey ho. The discs, they look a bit tired, but believe me, there's no lip on the discs. The brake pads are as good as new. I am all for fitting new parts while you're there, but I am also all for reusing parts if they are good. Now look, there is black everywhere, gloss black. You might say it looks a bit tacky. You're probably right, but I just want it to be aesthetically pleasing, nice and clean. I want it to not corrode five minutes after I've finished it. All done, I'm happy with it, apart from the ARB bushes. And yes, that nut's not off because we're gonna do them off camera. I will get the other side done. I won't time lapse it. No one wants to watch anything twice. So I'll get the other side done. We'll lower it down. I'll turn it round, get the rear springs and shocks in. Then we get it outside. We'll have a before and after comparison on our biro spring springs. And uh, yeah, it is coming together. Happy days. Front end's all back together. It's back on its wheels, turned it around and the front is definitely lower. It's not a very good comparison at the moment because it's now lifted up on the back. Anyway, done with the front for now and we're looking at the back. Let's have a little butchers. If we look under here, we can see the rear arms are corroded. A bit like the fronts, they look ropey, but they need a coat of paint. There's no way I can do the front wishbones and leave these ones looking as untidy as that. They definitely need doing. Unfortunately, when I went to undo the driver's wheel, I got the bar on the wheel, and as I went to undo it, there was movement in the rear wheel. So the outer bushes on these rear arms are petered out. I haven't got any of those, so a rebuild on the rear arms and on the rear calipers will have to be another video, i.e. next week, because I need to order a lot more parts. One thing I did notice, and I've always noticed it about the van since owning it, when you drove away, there was a bit of a squealing from the rear brakes. So one of them was slightly binding. It's this side, um, as I pushed it closer to the ramp, I noticed it was this side. Stripped the pads out, and I found not only is the boot a little bit twisted up. I did try to straighten it with the tool and a bit of WD-40, but it's a bit late. So we need some rebuild kits for the calipers, some rubbers and some seals. The main reason I have spotted why it was slightly grabbing on, this is the handbrake lever. I have popped the cable out, you can see it there. That is in the stopped position. So when you let the handbrake off, the lever will stop against this. When I first took the wheel off, that was pushed right down there with the cable on. I've popped the cable off and the arm sprung straight back. That tells me the caliper is good. Happy days. I have also pulled on the cable, because sometimes it's the uh, cable that gets seized, sometimes it's the caliper that seizes. Both the caliper popped straight back to the center or back to the stop position and the cable pulls completely fine. But when I pull this cable, I can't do it by hand, but when I pull this cable, that caliper starts moving. So basically, someone has over adjusted the handbrake cables. We can see one, two handbrake cables. They go into a Y piece with a 10 mil or a 13 mil, I haven't looked, lock nut. You tighten it to tighten the handbrake, loosen it to loosen the handbrake. Someone has over tightened that nut and that has caused this to be constantly pulled. <sighs> Don't have to replace anything, happy days, but I need to reset all the cables, put some new seals in this caliper, put some new pads in. I've ordered some new bushings. I need to check the inner bushes. I need to get under there with a lever bar. If they move, I'll replace them. If they don't move, I won't replace them. Genuine stuff is always better than aftermarket. So if they're solid, I'm not gonna go to the effort of changing them. I'll just change these outside ones. We'll clean and paint all these arms up and make them look pretty like the front. But for now, we need to get these lowering springs on, get it down on its wheels, get it outside and see how good it looks with the lowering kit.
Vans all back together. I'm sure you'll agree it looks a lot better sitting lower. It is 50 mil front and rear. At the moment, I can't knock them Euro car park springs. 50 pound plus the VAT. Don't forget, if you guys have got a T5, use one of the codes I've put in the video. I'll put the code I used and the code for the part number on the box. I'm sure you'll see it. I'll put it in the description of this video. Cheap. Get on it. Anyway, first drive looks loads better lower. I weren't going for the super low because I don't like the air ride slammed on the deck. I want it to be able to go over speed bumps or slightly off road if need be. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I didn't want it super low. It's low enough. I'm happy. I'm pumped. In fact, I haven't driven it yet. Let's uh, let's see what it's like. It was a bit bumpy before. You go over bumps, there was knocking, there was banging. Um, yeah, it should be loads better. Let's find out. Someone's literally just drove right in front of my way, but they seem to be moving. Oh, that door's swinging open. Nathan at Bumper to Bumper, they've just painted a nice Mercedes, and I take it the passenger, the passenger door is open. Oh, mate, they're going to kill my life off. Anyway, first impressions, it drives really nice. Hello. Yeah, let's get a bit of speed up. Give it a rest, will you? Um, well, it ain't knocking. My estate is really bumpy. There's something rattling in the back. There's loads of stuff. I used it as a shed. I've got a van. It's a shed. Um, yeah. Apart from everything about rattling in the back, the suspension is not noisy at all. Obviously, I can't go too far. There's uh, no front end on it. I don't want the Karens on the channel to uh, start hating on me. So we just take it to the end of the road, but it drives nice. I'm happy with that. Ah, oh, I mentioned. Uh, Someone had over tightened the handbrake adjuster. Well, I went to back it off, didn't I? Snapped it. So I've had to order ha a handbrake cable as well. It is only the outer bushes on the rear. There is no movement in the inner ones at all. So I'm not going to touch them. Again, genuine stuff is a lot better. So I'm going to leave them. Some outer bushes, some new rear pads. A new handbrake cable, clean and paint the rear arms up. It's going to be another video on that. So we've got a video, which is this one, front end suspension, steering parts. Next week's video probably be a bit less, a bit shorter, because there's not as much going on on the rear. There's nothing steering. It's just two arms and a cable. But we haven't got time to squeeze it in this one. So that'll be the next video. And then we're going to get on with something massive, the front end. Um, need to get a new bumper the bumper and all the DRL grills and the splitter and I want the later rear but it's about 600 quid oh my uh, anyway it is what it is bonnets about a tour not too bad so I need to get them um, one thing that I do want to mention a few of you ask about merch and stuff like that I haven't got none yet and to be honest I look around on other people's channels and they charge like 40 quid a t-shirt 50 quid a hoodie and if I'm ever to charge that for a decent it's got to be decent you know if you put it on you want it to feel good you want because when you feel good when you look good you feel good so it needs to be decent quality stuff anyway I'm testing the water I've got some stickers coming finally got some DTE TV stickers they're only a few quid and I've got some sick little metal key rings some little metal tags key rings little logo on it DTE TV oh uh, yeah um, gonna be like five gonna be like a five or each anything that I get in from key ring stickers is going straight back into the channel so don't think in six months time I'll be driving a Lambo or something like that 
any money I get from stuff like that will be going straight back into the channel, straight back into the projects, because then I can buy stuff straight away rather than having to do some work. Give it a rest. I can buy, get straight on and buy some bits anyway. This drives absolutely fantastic. If you've got a set of these AMAX springs on your T5, comment down below, what are they like? This feels fine. This is a really bumpy estate. And it's quite pleasant, actually. Anything gonna fall over? Oh, it does go well. Oh, there's nowhere to turn around up here. Um, I'm going to have to reverse all the way back down. <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, that is it from this one. Next video, I've already ordered all the bits for the back end. We're going to clean and paint them, make them pretty, make that mint, then we do the front end, and then we're getting on to paint. I still haven't decided on the colour scheme, but we'll get there. I have fitted a number plate on the caddy. I will, uh, I'll add a picture, a post, after this video goes out. Probably the weirdest outro of a video so far. We're reversing in a T5. If you enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. quite a long road. <laughs>